Canyon say their torque on is built to skip the lift line. It runs away from the shuttle zones. It's their most capable gravity e-mountain bike, built for thrashing down hills and hitting big jumps. I've got a new bike and just take a look at it. This is the Canyon Torque On CF Roxon, the 175 mil travel bruiser with a 180 fork. This has got mixed wheel size, which I think is great for a gravity bike. You got the stability and rollover 29er front wheel and the maneuverability and space of a 27.5 rear. The 63 and a half degree head angle puts this right in downhill bike territory, but the 77 and a half degree seat angle and 445 mil chainstay shows the intention to climb this thing right back up to the summit. And this is not any Canyon talk on, this is the CF Roxon. Yes, the Ken Roxon replica. And if you're a bit of a motocross nerd like me, then that'll get you more excited than it probably should do. If you're not into motocross, then you can probably still appreciate the amazing paint job on this thing. You might even say that the water bottle is slightly moto inspired, but the only fuel going in there is water with a bit of electrolytes. That's a 650 mil water bottle that sits within the frame. There's a top end carbon frame on this bike with top end kit as well, SRAM access transmission and dropper post. I mean, I only have two cables or brake hoses, so it's clean. You might be wondering who Ken Roxon is. Well, he's the German star of US motocross and supercross. He's a world champion and a two-time 450 motocross champion. He's also had some amazing comeback stories from injuries. Uh, and he's got a great style on a motocross bike. And he's a keen mountain biker and e-biker too, alongside Formula One superstar Valtteri Bottas, who also uh, Canyon support. But this isn't Ken's bike, this is my bike. Uh, and believe it or not, I actually ride a size large. So I'm right on the cusp according to Canyon size chart of medium and large. Uh, but I chose to go with the big bike. It's super generous reach on it. It's 500 mil, it's big. Along with that 63 and a half degree head angle, like I've already said, it's super stable going down the hills. I've actually, I've shortened it a little bit. I've stuck a 35 mil stem on here. I've taken the 50 mil off. And I've actually raised the bars a little bit as well to make it even better for going down the hills. This bike is powered by the Shimano EP801 motor. Uh, and this can come in with either a 720 watt hour or 900 watt hour battery. Lucky for me, I've got the big one, so loads of range. Of course, the payoff with that is the extra weight, but this bike has got great geometry, low suspension and big brakes, so there's no problem there. The EP801 has the capabilities for free shift and auto shift if you have the Shimano XT Di2 group set. Of course, this bike is full SRAM access wireless. Also, you can use their eTube project app to jump in and really tweak your settings including how much torque you want all the way from the 85 newton meter max down to 20 newton meters to save battery or how fast you want the motor to pick up. I'm running Instry 9 EN 350 wheels, carbon wheels. They are e-bike specific, so they've got a really broad inner width on these rims, 35 mil. So that gives you support to run up to 2.8 inch tires. You've got these direct thread straight pull spokes. There's actually no nipple there, it's just like a square profile. And they kind of wind straight into the hub. You've got 11 different color options with these, lifetime warranty on the carbon as well. They weigh in at 870 grams for the 29 front and 915 grams for 27.5 rear. I've got Pirelli tires, I've got the Scorpion M on the back, so mixed condition tire, pretty chunky actually, so it's 2.6 wide. And then I've got the downhill race tire up front, so nice and soft, like the Trek factory downhill team run, and that's 2.5. Big rotors as well. I've got 220 mil up front and the standard 200 mil on the rear. The brakes are super powerful. Gone down to a lighter spring on the rear shock. Obviously, you don't have that advantage of the air shock of just getting your, your pump out and sorting out. Although I do love the feel of core, core shock in this bike. I think because it's a large bike, it's probably slightly oversprung for me. So I've gone from a 450 down to a 400. Unfortunately, they didn't have a black one. So it's kind of has messed up my color scheme a little bit. Gone for the red one. But I do love the feel of the coral shock on this bike. And I've added a mud guard up front to make this a really good all rounder winter bike. My cockpit setup isn't for everybody, but I like it. Like I said, I run my bars relatively narrow, 760 for this bike. Um, I like my brake levers quite close to the bar with hardly any sort of pull on them. So I wind that contact point right in so that it kind of feels really strong. So when I'm fully on the brakes, I've got quite a closed sort of fist. Oh, I actually really like that. 
run the handguards, which not many people like either, but also kind of frustrating it means I have to run the power switch over here because of these levers as well, uh, which is all right. It's not perfect. Obviously, the cable, really neat, actually goes um, uh, under the grip inside the bar. So you can see where it kind of everything joins up and goes into the stem. So super neat as well. Levers relatively flat and actually I run my, my bars straight up if you're looking at the rise. The battery's nice and easy to take out. You just unclip that guard and then there's two five mil Allen keys and then just slides right out. The 900 watt hours is big enough for me to do 1800 meters of ascending, which is like 25 kilometers of downhill runs basically, all on full boost and I weigh 75 kilograms. This thing is about as close you'll get to a downhill or a free ride bike with the e-bike motor and 900 watt hours of assistance. Uh, Sounds like a fun day out for me, so I'm gonna thrash them down the runs and uh, just do loads of good riding. So other than geometry and suspension, what makes this Canyon Talk on Built for Purpose? Well, Canyon give their bikes a rating based on their strength. So this is 5E, so rated for big jumps, high speeds, bike parks and downhill trails. Compare that to their more trail orientated 150mm travel spectral. Well, that is 4E and then their more XC adventure style bike, the 140mm travel neuron on, and that is a 3E. Roxham for me, as I call it, has basically become my downhill bike. The 900 watt hours, as I've tested, gives me 1800 meters of climbing, which is way more than I would do on a normal ride. So it's plenty enough juice to get me out and do lots of sessioning on this bike. But more than that, it's just the capabilities of the bike. It feels really solid down the hill and it handles everything I throw at it. Big jumps, fast downhills. I love the grip and the brake in this bike gives me and the suspension is just so plush. Having the coil on the rear, feels really good. So uh, I'm loving it. Let me know in the comment section what you think of my rocks and if you think that's the best paint job you've ever seen. I do, although I do need to get a black spring. Anyway, small sacrifices. Also, let me know if you think the bigger battery, the better if you want to do sessioning uh, downhill tracks in your downhill bike. Get involved in the comments down below.